Howdy all you delicious people. I'm here to talk about a movie called Mr. Mom with Michael Keaton and a cluster of other actors that really are very iconic. Uh, really, I even know uh, Terry Garr, ultimately from the movie Young Frankenstein, uh, who ultimately plays uh, Carol Butler in this, or Caroline Butler in this movie. Michael Keaton ultimately plays this character, Jack, that seemingly going through this movie is a person that will ultimately seem like he knows what he's doing, but honestly has no clue. Uh, to the point to where ultimately he's trying to motivate his workers by talking about a movie that he has no real knowledge of, or ultimately he is... Uh, Ultimately, like, he's adjusting to things in his own way. And at the end of the day, a lot of that is uh, silly and or stupid and or wrong. Um, and people have to call him out on that. Just be like, oh, yeah, like, you are you could barely do any of this stuff that your wife has been doing for numerous years. Because ultimately what ends up happening is... Jack ends up uh, working for an automotive uh, company, which I think ultimately Michael Keaton has done two films that have been working, uh, that he had uh, done two films that have been with uh, a motor vehicle like company. Uh, I think he ends up doing another movie where he ends up desperately having to put a number of cars together with some Japanese like company. And it seems that at the very tail end of that experience, it ends up being that there are parts missing from these, uh, from these cars. Like there's an entire engine missing out of one of the cars. But ultimately we have Michael Keaton that is like, well, no, this car is perfectly fine. If anything, I'm going to drive it off the lot. And as soon as he tries to drive it off the lot, the entire car completely falls apart. And that is at the very tail end of the movie where ultimately the, the people that are that have uh, tried to put these cars together and, and this and that. And it ends up that the company ends up just buying up all the cars anyways and just successful ending. But that's not this movie. Anyways, we have to where Michael Keaton ends up losing his job and ultimately he has to make a bet with his wife to see who is going to get a job much sooner uh, and ends up that his wife ends up getting a job. And then so now Michael Keaton now has to take care of his kids. Uh, it seems like it seems like we are very early in the development of these kids. So reasonably. Like, I'd assume at most point, I'm like, man, is this like summer vacation for these kids? Because it doesn't really seem like they have to go to school all that much. Or maybe it's at the tail end of their school year because it doesn't really seem like they go to, again, to school that much. If anything, there are some very, like, one-of-a-kind things through every single one of these actors. There's something that really sticks out between every single person. And that is the thing where I ultimately enjoy the most about this film is like everybody has their like I would call it gimmick, but everyone has their like no one uh, no one looks identically the same between anyone in this movie. Reasonably, I I thought that this movie was like for the small little things like there were some hilarious moments within this movie that come across as like kind of you could sympathize with this person or you could otherwise just kind of like root for him to ultimately eventually kind of get out of this uh this bottom of the barrel that he's that uh jack's character sinks himself into we have it to where seemingly his wife is never home. So ultimately, like, what else does he have much to do besides watch soap operas and <laughs> and ultimately deal with whatever uh, projects that his kids are, are dealing with uh, in, within this movie? Like, of course, one of his kids ultimately has a whoopee, Kenny, 
ultimately has a Wolby, which ultimately is his, his security blanket. And we eventually have to have Jack talk, uh, talk Kenny out of this, out of this Wolby, out of this blanket. And the way in which that he ends up breaking it down is almost surefire hilarious. And, and I thought that it was such a funny scene and as well as a number of other things. When anything tends to seemingly malfunction within Jack's house, uh, we end up having a a ton of funny moments out of this. At some points, with all the horrible things going on in this movie, at some point it kind of remind, reminds me a little bit of the Tom Hanks movie Money Pit. But, like, it's not that, like, the whole entire house just ends up, like, slowly but surely, like, falling completely apart. No, it's just these little tiny things here and there that uh, escalate this movie to be an interesting thing. So, going into this, we also seem to, at some points, have maybe um, Jack and Caroline's relationship being on the rocks, where it's just like, if anything, it seems that there are at points uh, here and there where uh, there is a friend of uh, Caroline that ends up kind of moving in and almost being the surrogate mother uh, for for uh, Jack's kids. Uh, because it seems like Jack is basically taking over for Caroline to where ultimately we have these women that come into his house consistently and and like hang out with him like it is kind of funny that basically we have this complete swap where ultimately Jack is now there in fact like making friends with Caroline's friends and Caroline is ultimately uh making a friend out of her boss as well <laughs> And so there seems to be some kind of uh, second guessing between Jack and between Caroline. It's like where ultimately Jack is ultimately complaining how Caroline is never home. And recently she's not there for him. And to her, to her ultimately when Jack is completely falling apart because he actually needed Caroline to just be there for any moment uh, with him that ultimately he just kind of reverts back into to almost just a caveman ish like person because reasonably like uh who does he have to look good for <laughs> and when caroline finally shows up and then heckles the crap out of him by how he looks now it's just like well you're never home like who do i have to like, who do I have to look good for when you're never here? And so that's where, like, kind of fights break out and everything like that. Like, it's... And then ultimately we have it to where, like, Jack wants to, like... To showcase his manlyhood to his wife. To showcase, like, yeah, I'm strong and yeah, I'm this. But he can't even do that. He can't even do that, um... Because ultimately, again, either Caroline is one, never there, or two, like there is some conundrum where it's like, oh no, like you have to, uh, you have to look bad. You have to, you can't look strong um, because ultimately, uh, if anything, Caroline will respect if you like bow out of, of not looking as strong and she'll love you for it, but if anything, still, like, it's kind of deflating uh, to have a, like, for Jack's ego. So, going on into this, I, I thought that this movie is a heavily enjoyable film, uh, kind of almost the equivalent of, like, a Christmas vacation kind of film, like, it probably doesn't have as much jokes as that movie does, or it probably doesn't have uh, as many, like, as many, uh, like, it's a lot of small stuff that adds up over time uh, within this film, and that's, like, 
you can ultimately like the almost simplicity of it. You can almost enjoy the fact that like you can relate to things or uh, it almost gets to the fact where you can just uh, kind of be any number of these characters. You could be Jack, you could be Caroline, you could be uh, looking back on your past and like, oh, I was uh, Kenny's character because I used to have a security blanket or I used to, I, uh, and so on and so forth. Any of these characters could quite possibly be relatable. Even the, uh, even the woman that was basically throwing herself onto Jack at some point, which I think is uh, Joan. So, let's go into reviewing this movie, ultimately talking about it. Um, yeah, I I thoroughly uh, I thoroughly watch whenever I can, like, whenever this movie kind of pops in my head, because I have a bajillion of them to think of. Um, I've been kind of waiting to re-watch this movie, and luckily I can do that now. Ultimately, it was like... Yeah, it's kind of hard to really search that this search for this movie. You can ultimately watch it currently right now on YouTube for free. Uh, ultimately, I really couldn't find it through any apps, uh, any other like free app equivalent. Like, because every time I try to search it, like I either try to put in the word Mister or I try to put in the word Mom, and it was like very hard to find the exact that exact title. Uh, maybe because the movie is so old, but it is what it is. So, let's go into spoiler time. Spoiler time, it's about that time you get spoil <sighs> this movie. Uh, ultimately, when I talked about Batman 1989, I talked about this film. So, ultimately, if you are just a Keaton fan, uh, I have already reviewed uh, the Batman film. Um, I, haven't rev I haven't reviewed Batman Returns yet, but eventually maybe I will get there. Uh, ultimately, I might have to save that maybe for next Christmas, because uh, it's a Christmas film for the most point. Uh, but anyways, let's go into spoilers about this movie. So, we have Jack, who is ultimately, again, working with automotives, uh, seemingly putting parts on cars together. Ultimately, his... Ultimately, his co-workers are feeling kind of down. They're not quite feeling all that motivated. And and Jack is ultimately mentioning, him, mentioning to him, it's like, hey, man, like, like, don't get yourselves down. It's like, hey, like, the Lions aren't doing that good, but it's early in the season. And they're just like, no, man, like, we're, like, we're not feeling bad about that. It's like, if anything, we were kind of uh, getting the, uh, through the grapevine that, like, people are getting laid off. And so Jack is like, hey, don't worry about that. Like, if ever anything, we're working really hard. Like, if anything, I think you guys just need some motivation. You know what I just watched last night? I just watched one of the, the Rocky movies. And and so, there, and so everybody's, like, jumping on that. Like, oh, which Rocky movie did you see? Like, which one was it? Was it the first one? And he's like, no, I don't think that's one it is. Like, and so they keep asking him which Rocky movie it was. Like, what, who did he fight? Was it Mr. T in the movie, the guy with the mohawk? <laughs> like, was his coach dead or was his coach alive? Like, they ultimately keep poking uh, holes into what Rocky movie that, that Jack had seen. And, and... Ultimately, while Jack is consistently talking about this movie, he has no knowledge of. He's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not really quite sure. Like, I just don't quite remember. But here's my point. Like, so Rocky is a boxer. And so, like, he's up against the ropes and everything go is going wrong with him. Well, we just need to keep on fighting, you know? We just need to keep on, like, we just need to keep on um keep on trying and that's all that we can really that's all we we can really say about this <laughs> and ultimately like keaton jack just walks away and ultimately all the co-workers are like are all together and they're ultimately just saying like dude he never saw any of the rocky films <laughs> he never saw any of the rocky films 
But funny enough, later on in one of the uh, one of his kids' rooms, we have the poster for Rocky Three, which I guess is maybe the movie that Jack ended up seeing, and or that or reasonably um, the poster that he ended up buying uh, for his kid because of because his kid had seen Rocky, but he hadn't. So, but I just thought it was hilarious how he was trying to like talk about a film that he has no knowledge of. And ultimately, he, when uh, everyone calls him out on it, he's like, "Ah, f- I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything about this movie." This movie, so because uh, ultimately, what ends up happening is uh, before this moment, we have to showcase like uh, Jack waking up and uh, trying to get ready for work, ultimately to leave his pajama pants. Uh, on his on his person while g- walking into the shower, and so he's like, "Oh crap!" And he flings the the pajama pants on the shower because he completely like realized that he is not awake at all. So we have it to where uh, his wife is getting uh, his kids ready, and ultimately. Jack is scrambling to get his clothes on, ultimately to see a cartoon where Jack is consistently a- asking Alex, which is his oldest, hey, what are we watching? Ultimately, the Incredible Hulk cartoon, but they don't actually come to that consensus. Ultimately, Jack is just ultimately looking at it and he's like, oh, hey, robots and oh, hey, this. And he's like, he has no clue what his kids are watching, uh, but they're watching it. So... I guess ultimately you couldn't reference a Incredible Hulk, Hulk cartoon because ultimately I had seen that cartoon and I'm like, yeah, that's Incredible Hulk. So ultimately we have to where uh, Jack ends up getting picked up by a carpool that is being done by a lot of his co-workers to showcase that ultimately we have Christopher Lloyd in the car. We have Jeffrey... Uh, Tambor, who is in this car, and we ultimately have a, uh, Tom Leopard or Leopold, I'm assuming, in the car as well. Uh, but anyways, moving on. So, ultimately, Jack mentions how, like, he had gotten the fewest amount of sleep, and ultimately, he's uh, double-checking with one of his co-workers, like, if there was a, a record for how few amount of sleep that ultimately someone had gotten and ultimately like oh yeah uh so and so holds that record well i think i beat him last night so pushing on for them to go to work and then ultimately we have we have michael keaton who needs to go and talk to uh talk to jinx who jinx uh lathman who ultimately is the guy that he carpooled with so Jack goes to speak to Jinx and Jinx is going to tell him, hey, guys, like uh, he brings everybody in that he carpooled with and told him, hey, guys, I'm going to have to let you all go. And so we have Christopher Lloyd's character that is ultimately telling him, like, dude, you carpooled with us. Like, why didn't you tell us that we were going to get let go? And Jinx is like, well. I couldn't say anything until, like, I actually confirmed that you guys were all being let go. Like, I couldn't just tell you today that you guys were all going to get canned. And, like, so I I was trying to be nice. I was trying to be nice about it. And ultimately, he's, like, telling them, it's like, hey, guys, you're going to get all these, like, these packages and stuff like that, like, after you let go, like... But Christopher Lloyd's character is like, no, I want, uh, I want disability. So he's trying to like, he's trying to throw himself out of a window that he can't throw himself out of, as well as choking Jinx and all these kinds of craziness. And so ultimately you just have it to where they end up just uh, packing all their stuff and evidently all of them all go to a bar and end up getting uh, driven away via taxi. And so we ultimately have 
Caroline with all the kids looking very nice and and presentable for their uh, Jack to come home. Um, like they're trying to put a good dinner on, ultimately trying to make Jack feel a little bit better about him uh, ending up getting fired from his job. Uh, the ultimately... Uh, Jack ultimately comes home and, of course, uh, one of his kids breaks it to him that he, like, yeah, we heard you got fired. And Jack's like, yeah, I did. Like, yeah, it happens. So, Caroline ends up saying, well, yeah, like, we're sorry and this and that, but hey, like, come in and eat. And ultimately, Jack's like, well, what are we eating? And she's like, Colonel Chicken. <laughs> They couldn't say KFC or they couldn't say Kentucky Fried Chicken. They said con they said Colonel Chicken, which I thought was hilarious. And Jack's like, we can't afford that. So they're eating. And so after putting the, the kids to bed, ultimately Jack and Caroline make a bet. Supposedly Jack had $100 to... Caroline's one dollar that ultimately that they could that they could actually get uh, a job between the two of them and so ultimately making a competition out of this we ultimately have Caroline who easily is going to fight a job and so Jack is telling her it's like hey take the money Caroline you won you won the money you won the pot so you ultimately find that Caroline is tying herself onto some uh, tuna company and Jack is still like desperately trying to find any resource to get a job. Get a job. Uh. So we ultimately have to where Caroline is going to her job and it seems that it seems like she is uh, being a part of this company that it seems like everybody is kind of... They're kind of out of touch with the real world, where ultimately Caroline is very much in touch with the real world. So, when we have Caroline's boss who had uh, interviewed her, which is Ron, which ultimately I know him uh, as uh, Martin Mull from Roseanne, mostly... Um, but so, Ron ultimately told uh, Caroline to call her Ron because evidently he's gotten a really good rapport with her. Basically means that Ron wants to sleep with her as soon as humanly possible. And so, basically forcing Caroline to have long hours so that way ultimately her husband will probably leave her because she's never home. So... Ron ultimately goes to talk to Caroline and is saying like, okay, well, it seems like all these, all these pitches aren't working uh, and they don't sound any close to being any good. Caroline, what do you have? And so reasonably Caroline is just kind of running through a lot of these pitches and she's basically saying in a nice way that all, every single one of them are all garbage. And then ultimately that she can come up with probably one better because reasonably like she has been a mother. She has been grocery shopping and she has been um, ultimately like on the front lines where everyone else is so out of touch. So really everybody is liking her opinions to the point to where they're quickly and easily promoting her. And so good for her. So... Pushing back into Jack, which is uh, the much more kind of uh, funny story to Caroline's kind of like much more like straight man-ish like story. So we had Jack that ultimately had to be told by Caroline what all to do and like all the tricks and trades and whatever that she's been able to figure out. But ultimately Jack is still doing everything wrong. To the point where he's dropping off his kids and ultimately you're supposed to drop off your kids a certain specific way and he F's that up. He ends up going the alternative route instead of the route where everyone else is going. And ultimately we have, uh, we had, uh, we had Annette, we had Annette who ultimately is played by 
uh, Miriam Flynn, who ultimately I had recently seen her on Christmas Vacation. Ultimately, she is also in this movie. Uh, basically telling Jack, hey, yeah, um, you're doing this wrong. <laughs> like, if anything, we're supposed to drop off these kids a specific way and just kind of like helping you out. Uh, this girl eventually comes into this movie more and more to eventually be uh, Jack's friend, as well as Joan. And also uh, there's another third girl that ends up coming into this movie as well, which I don't know what her name is. <laughs> Uh, um anyways so going into this we have a uh, jack who is of course doing a lot of uh dumb things or ultimately just reasonably and or rationally making a lot of mistakes that ultimately will lead to an escalation of things like it seems that at some point like his um like his kids are just ra like crazily running around or ultimately there's stuff that seems to at some point like malfunction like his vacuum is like crazily almost running after his son at some point and he ultimately loses his uh kid in the grocery store um, because ultimately he had gotten a cart and ultimately had completely misplaced all of his kids at the grocery store to ultimately when he runs back to the aisle of which that he was at, he has to switch, uh, kids, um, within this cart. And then ultimately he has to find his baby that ultimately Joan has to where that's where Joan is ultimately going to come in and tell, uh, tell Jack it's like well hey like if anything like if you need any help like please like call me call me anytime like I'm willing to like help you figure out uh who are the ba who are the best babysitters like I'm here to like help you out in any way I can and it also seems like Joan is hitting on Jack and Jack is just like so happy to have a friend or anyone that is really going to help him figure all this stuff out because Carolyn is just completely gone. So ultimately Anne and Annette and Joan are, I guess, really close friends to the point where they kind of do everything together. And Anne and Anne and Annette is telling Joan, it's like, uh, he's married. <laughs> and Joan is like, well, so were we at one point. So, Pushing on more and more into this movie, we have it to where, like, Jack is end up is ending up like playing poker with the gals, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, but instead of like using poker chips, they're using coupons, which I find I found was funny. Uh, it ends up at some point, uh, Caroline ends up coming home every once in a while and she has her boss pick her up and so Jack ends up when Ron ends up coming to the door he ends up coming in there with uh like overalls on and a, a Detroit Lions hat and a chainsaw and so Ron ends up coming in and Jack is mentioning all the like the construction work that he's going to do on the house. He's going to tear up the house and, and ultimately like put, um, put new things on the walls and all this other stuff. And you have Ron that is kind of poking at, uh, Jack told me, say, it's like, well, are you going to use like a 202? And he's like, yeah, 202, 203, whatever works. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, like, I think it's like a two, maybe he says two by two or like a, a two by two, two by three. Anyways, uh, whatever works. So you ultimately have it to where Ron is trying to establish how manly he is against or Jack is trying to establish how manly he is uh, against Ron. And funny enough, uh, when uh Ron and Caroline leave. Jack is ultimately saying, it's like, well, hey, like, 
if you try to call me later, Caroline, I'm either going to be at the, the gun show or I'm going to be at the gym. <laughs> and Caroline is like, uh-huh. Like, hey, nice, nice outfit you got on there. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, uh, sure, Jack. Just, just throw on those things. So pushing on into this movie, uh, kind of like kind of skipping around here and there, but I'm still kind of having fun with this movie. So we find Jack just really in, uh, like into the mother ish like mode to where he is watching soap operas in the middle of the day and he's enjoying them to the point where he's like, really desperately needing to know like who's going to be the mother of of so and so's baby and we have to where ultimately like his son at some point is um talking about that his grilled cheese isn't quite melted all the way and so uh jack ends up like using a iron uh, an iron to like steam the a grilled cheese in you more and so alex is just looking at the grilled cheese and he's like huh like, okay <laughs> so we ultimately have it to where kenny's whoopie is torn and so we have jack just stapling the whoopie uh because reasonably it's just like dude he, he doesn't know how to sew and on top of that it's like he's like this whoopie is kind of worn out its uh usefulness anyways uh, so we find out eventually that Jack has to talk to Kenny about getting rid of his whoopee. Um, and that'll happen a little bit later, but so ultimately we have it at some point to where Jack is trying to make, uh, nice meals for his wife, but ultimately He's making these nice meals, lighting a lighting a, a candle lit, like a dinner and everything like that. And Caroline never comes home. And so Jack ultimately just leaves her a note just to say, hey, like food's in the oven um, and this and that. And Caroline's like, oh, he tried. <laughs> so we ultimately just have Jack trying to do something nice for his wife and ultimately she's just never home. So we eventually have, we eventually have to our Jack considering his wife is never home. Like he just like grows a full on beard. He ends up wearing the same flannel shirt for two weeks. And then ultimately when his wife finally does come home, uh, ultimately she just heckles the crap out of him because ultimately it's like, well, Jack, you're like, you're putting on some weight and you've been wearing that same flannel shirt for two weeks and yeah, that beard. And he's like, my beard, <laughs> like, like, and he's like, you know what? I love this shirt. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're complaining about. This is my favorite shirt. <laughs> so Recently, you just have it to where Jack is, like, ultimately just mad at Caroline because it's like, well, you're never home. Like, why is it that I have to, like, look good for, for no one? And Caroline is just, like, is ultimately like, hey, I've been where you're, where you're at right now. It's like, if anything, eventually you're, like, everything, like... Eventually you're going to like, you're in a rut right now, but eventually you're like, eventually you're going to realize that to clean yourself up and, and kind of like, you're going to feel better and this and that. It's like, I've been where you've been. And so this and that. And so Jack just doesn't want to hear any of this stuff. So eventually he just goes off to, off to the couch and just sleeps on the couch. Realizing that like, Hey, Caroline, I made you pizza or I got you pizza. It's like, Hey, like, like come and eat with the family and Caroline is just so tired that ultimately she like she's like too tired to even eat anything and so and that's when Jack tries to make like uh food for her in bed but ultimately it's just that's what starts the whole argument 
of like Jack is consistently trying and Caroline is just like she's exhausted or tired or just doesn't want to hear it. So like Jack is trying to be romantic and and Caroline just doesn't want to have any of it. So Jack sleeps on the sleeps on the couch. So we eventually at some point like stuff ends up getting broken. We have several repairmen that ends up coming in here. Funny, funnily enough, uh, at some point the dishwasher ends up getting broken because uh, Jack puts way too much clothes into the, uh, into the, did I say dishwasher? Um, the, the washer of the washer and dryer combination. He ends up putting too much clothes into it, and that's what ends up uh, having the. Uh, seemingly pipes or something burst onto the washer to where all of a sudden water is going everywhere. To where ultimately we have Jack who has to call a repairman to fix this washer, but it's like a haunted washer to where it's like attacking people to where even the, wa the, the repairman is kind of like running for his life, grabbing um, Alex and just kind of like being all scared <laughs> to where ultimately Jack has to come to the evade of them uh, ultimately we find out the TV's broken, and so we ultimately have to call, I believe, Doris, um, who is this very, uh, very, very manly repair, um, woman that ultimately is coming in to repair, uh, Jack's TV. So, a lot of things are getting broken in this movie, but eventually, uh, things are working out. So, we get to a point where Jack is is complaining to his wife that ultimately he has become her basically that ultimately he is spending so much time with her friends and ultimately that, uh, he's watching the same, uh, the same shows that Joan is watching, uh, soap operas and he's loving them <laughs> to where, while to where, while they're to where, while the, the soap operas are on, uh, we have, uh, I believe Joan or any number of the girls like calling Jack to me try to figure out like which, um, which, uh, guy otherwise has the, uh, like has the, is able to impregnate this woman that is on this soap opera to the point to where ultimately like, uh, Jack is thinking that it's one person but ultimately, uh, someone else is assuming it's another, and he's like, well, wait, like, I thought that this person had a vasectomy. And then ultimately, he's uh, he's hearing what the other person says, is like, oh my god, the vasectomy didn't take? And so, <laughs> like, he's getting so enthralled with these soap operas, and you just love him for it. It's, it's hilarious. So, we have to where, ultimately, like, Jack likes soap operas so much, that he is even dreaming in soap opera like ways. So Jack ends up going into this, this deep dream. Uh, and cause ultimately Caroline is consistently gone and Jack is just in such a rut that ultimately he's dreaming in soap opera ease. So we have it to where Jack is dreaming, and so he's desperately calling Joan um, because he feels something is wrong. Uh, and because really at some point we have Caroline who at one point seemingly uh, is... Like, I think going into uh, being away on a business trip. And so we have Jack who is spiraling spiral down, spiraling down because of this. So Jack is dreaming. And ultimately, I think this dream comes right after the fact that uh, Caroline had been on a way on a business trip and ultimately she had Ron who is consistently trying to hit on her and ultimately trying to seduce her. But Caroline wants nothing of it. Uh, Caroline 
ultimately just wants to soak in a bath and that's all that she wants to do. And Ron is like, mm, you know what? That sounds like a pretty good, uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good idea. Because ultimately, while Caroline is going to soak in the butt, uh, the tub, Ron is going to take advantage of that and bring in all kinds of stuff to, to seduce Caroline. And ultimately, while Jack is going to call call Caroline to ultimately just to talk to her, he ends up picking up the phone with Ron instead. So we have Caroline who makes her way onto uh, out of the bath talking to Ron, and Ron is consistently trying to just trying to seduce her, and he is uh, going to get slapped by Caroline. And knocked back. Um, before this, we had a whole time where Jack was uh, going to this get together, where it was at Rom's home, and so ultimately uh, we had this like this obstacle course field race thing, uh, which ultimately Jack could ultimately be a part of. And so ultimately, Jack is like, "Yeah, I'm gonna win this thing. I'm gonna win whatever this thing is." And all of the other guys are telling him, "Hey." lose lose so that way ron can win because reasonably uh your wife is his boss so lose to make him look good so that way caroline will respect you jack tries to go through this obstacle course and the entire time people are grabbing at his leg and like he's desperately trying to win this thing but everybody's holding him down but ron is making his way through this obstacle course so people are cheating so that way Jack doesn't win. And so Jack at the last ditch effort like trips and falls so that way Ron would win. And Caroline is just like, yeah, you 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 bowed out on purpose. And Jack is like, yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but anyways, pushing on to uh, so many scenes that I've mentioned now. So Jack is ultimately dreaming uh, that quite possibly his wife is cheating on him. And so reasonably we have it to where uh, Jack is ultimately calling Joan and Joan is like, I will be right there. And so, and so Jack with his flannel and his beard and everything like that, uh, we have Joan, like, a second later, showing up at his home in a trench coat. And I'm like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. And so, Joan is like, yeah, I came as soon as I could. And Jack's like, yeah, you really did. <laughs> so, Joan is telling everything, telling everything about Jack that, uh, that... Joan likes about Jack where it's like, yeah, I like your flannel shirt. I like your beard. I like everything about you, Jack. And Jack is just like, man, this is really weird. And so Joan ends up uh, taking off her trench coat to ultimately reveal that she is just wearing uh, seemingly lingerie underneath. And Jack is like, oh, my God, Joan. Like, how could you show me this? Uh... And like Joan is trying to seduce Zach, trying to seduce Jack. And so ultimately his wife comes walking in and he's like, how could you? Because ultimately there was a moment before where uh, Jack is ultimately in the shower and Joan is talking to Jack uh, via, via, uh, Jack's bedroom and Caroline ends up walking in on them and like just talking to one another and Caroline is like what the heck like Joan you're my best friend what are you doing in uh, what are you doing in my bedroom and Joan is like oh we we're just talking like we we're just talking and Jack uh, reconfirms with um, reconfirms with Caroline it's like like, she was talking to me in another room. Like, we weren't doing anything. And ultimately, that's when Jack mentions to, uh, to, uh, 
to Caroline about the call that he had made to her and ultimately had gotten Ron. So in this dream sequence, we have Caroline who is pulling out a gun on Jack and shoots him and ultimately ruining his favorite shirt. He's like, oh my God, my shirt. That's all he cares about. He doesn't care about the bullet that went through him. No, all he cares about is his favorite shirt. So he ends up falling onto the ground uh, with this uh, chalk outline that ultimately he doesn't fall the right way. So he has to adjust his body to um, be right within the chalk outline of where he was supposed to fall. And we have it to a Rob, Ron and Caroline are looking over him. And ultimately you have Ron going like, yeah, it's too bad that you're dead, Jack. Like, hey, Caroline, what did you use? Did you use a 22? And she's like, oh, yeah, I used a 22, 23. Yeah, you know what? Whatever works. <laughs> so everybody's just kind of like hovering over Jack's body, ultimately giving a giving him a memorial and this and that. And so we have to where, uh, of course... Ron is consistently getting Jack's name wrong and he doesn't even remember what it is. And so Jack has to confirm that his name, my name's Jack, I'm Jack. <laughs> so we have Jack waking up from this dream, finally realizing that he needs to do something with his life. He clean shaves his beard. He gets rid of his... Uh, he gets rid of his favorite flannel shirt and throws it into the fire. We have it to where uh, they're also trying to get rid of things in the fire, and the Wobby is one of them. And so Jack has to talk to Kenny and say, you know what, like, your, your Wobby, it's getting a little moldy. It's getting a little, like, you know, it's kind of like, I think it's time for you to get rid of that bad boy. So if anything, like, yeah, a Wobi is all fine and great now, but then eventually you're just going to go down a slippery road where you're going to have to, where you're going to be desperately, like, uh, dealing for electric blankets, and eventually you're just going to go down a slippery road of electric blankets, and then, uh, and then comforters, and then maybe uh, you're just going to be addicted to bed sheets, son. Like, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying, like... Like, he's talking to him as if, like, he's an addict uh, of this whoopee. And that ultimately, like, they're having, like, a, uh, a, uh, like, a, they're trying to, like, uh, getting, they're, they're trying to, like, rehabilitate him. Or they're trying to, like, he's trying to, like, talk him, like, off this ledge, so to speak, of, uh, of going into, like, hardcore, uh, hardcore comforters or or bed sheets or or electric blank <laughs> so we have it to where kenny ends up giving jack the wooby and ultimately we have it to where eventually caroline comes home and jack is talking about all the improvements that he has done uh, to the home or just overall just for the family ultimately like telling all this stuff that had happened and like jack is mentioning that's like hey like i even i even got kenny to get to get rid of his wooby like you didn't even notice <laughs> you didn't even notice that he doesn't even have his wooby anymore so Caroline more and more is just feeling guilty for how much she is not at, not at home. Uh, ultimately, it seems like she has come up with the perfect pitch for, um, for this tuna company. Uh, to ultimately, Howard um, Humphreys is doing, uh, is, is in a meeting with them and he's like, man, like this pitch is amazing. Uh, this pitch sounds American and it sounds uh, like it sounds great. And 
Because ultimately, uh, we have Caroline who is breaking down that there was so many stuff that they had stupidly given away. Like, they've given away, like, uh, glasses, and they've given away, like, um, Hawaiian trips, and none of that all worked. And so ultimately, Caroline mentions to Howard that ultimately, how about you just ultimately tell people, like, it seems like we're having a very tough time, uh like in the in the way of financing today so if anything we're gonna tell everybody that ultimately we're just gonna drop the the can of tuna to 50 cents uh 50 cents less um until ultimately it seems that um our economy our economy or our market has uh kind of uh worked itself out and because ultimately and and Howard takes this entire argument and this entire thing, this entire pitch, and he loves it. He's like, oh, my God, like, I want to do this commercial. And so ultimately he does. So. And so recently this thing ends up going so well, but eventually Ron is hitting on Caroline and ultimately she smacks him and then quits her job. So. We ultimately have it to where Caroline is mentioning to Jack that ultimately she wants to be more at home. And uh, Jack had even tried to get back his old job and did an interview for it. But ultimately the one babysitter that he tried to bring uh, to ultimately do this interview, like she looked like a punk rocker or whatever. And, and he didn't like her. He didn't trust her. So ultimately he's like, no, like I'm going to bring my entire, I'm going to bring all my kids to my interview and ultimately, I'm going to just try to get this job. But ultimately, Jack had to bend over and kiss everyone's butt uh, to try to get this job back. And that's not what J Jack wanted to do. Because Jinx is ultimately with him in this meeting. And Jinx is telling Jack, it's like, well, hey, like, I covered for you guys as long as I could. And so, like, now you're going to have to go and tell these guys that that uh like you you made a lot of mistakes and now you're going to improve upon them and so reasonably jack is not going to want to bend over and kiss anyone's butt to get his job because ultimately his income is completely fine so We ultimately have his son walking in, ultimately ask his father something, and Jinx ultimately tells him, it's like, uh, excuse me, kid, but the, the adults are talking. And we ultimately have Jack, who's like, if you ever talk to my son like that again, I'm going to knock you out. So we ultimately have Jack coming home and ultimately not getting a job. Nothing seems to be working for him to get a job. But ultimately, we have Caroline coming home and saying, like, yeah, like, like, I'm I feel so guilty not being home enough. And so, like, now I want to be home. And, and Jack is like, but yeah, but the money, the money that we were, you were getting, the income you were getting from that job, it seems like everything was working out. You were getting promotions and all kinds of stuff. But Caroline's like, no, I just I just want to be home to where we have Ron coming into the fray of of Caroline and Jack's home just saying, hey, like, no matter what had happened, like, hey, like, like, our, like, our, our guy wants you there desperately. And then also you have Jinx going and seeing a Jack to ultimately telling him that it's like, like, hey, like, no matter what happens, like, my, like, our bosses want you back at work. Like, if anything, they'll pay whatever that you want. Like, they just want you back. And so, because reasonably, like, when Jack does that complete uh, speech that he gives, uh, telling him what for, and then ultimately leaving to go to the bathroom where he has to uh, try to... Uh, clean up his baby because evidently he forgot to bring wet wipes or anything like that to to clean up his baby and so reasonably uh we have his kids just crazily all playing with the the toilet paper and fling it all over the place in the bathroom 
to where we have this executive come to the bathroom to find this guy to realize that like the bathroom is completely disheveled. But pushing on, so reasonably it seems that really we don't have a real and true consensus of whether or not they they get their jobs back. Um, but I guess it's just supposed to lead to a happy ending none, nonetheless. Uh, we ultimately have it to where Jack again pops Jinx in the face yet again. Uh, or he ends up popping Jinx in the face uh, because ultimately Jinx ends up like talking down to Jack's son. And so he's like, I told you, I told you I'd knock you out. Like if you talk to my son like that again. So I think that that Jack is going to stay home and Caroline is can is going to work uh, within that company and ultimately do the, the schooner tuna commercial and because ultimately we see Howard is doing the commercial and talking about the, the 50 cents off uh, until they can get the economy economy back to, to where it should be. And because we're all in this together and, and God bless America and bop, 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 bop. And that's just kind of how the movie ends where it just kind of seems like there's a happy ending happening for all. But other, overall, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.